Good morning all. Um, I just wanted to share with you a little PowerPoint presentation I put together on diesel misfire diagnostics using Pico 7. Um, I hope you find it beneficial and get something out of it. Um, so this vehicle I'm connected to at the minute is uh, got a component misfire throughout the engine RPM range. Um, it's clearly down on one cylinder, however I've got no engine management light on. Um, so I've connected up the scan tool, checked for errors, no errors in the engine ECU. Um, so I've moved on to engine data just to see if anything stood out um, to help me pinpoint uh, which cylinder is, is concerned. Uh, all my pressures and um, and temperature readings all, all seem to be fine. Um, I couldn't, couldn't see anything uh, of, of concern. The only thing that stood out was fuel correction. Um, so I've added this to a graph just to, so we can run through it um, and see what we think. Uh, so you can see on, on my graph here, I, I'm at the start of my graph, I'm at just at idle speed and you can see cylinder four as a correction of minus five, cylinder three as a correction of plus five, cylinder 2.7 and cylinder one, 1.49. Um, my golden rule here is um, I want all my corrections to be under two. Um, if they're above two, then it's, it's got a con uh, there's, there's a concern with the cylinder um, and also they should all cancel out each other. So um, you, 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 if you add them all up, it, it should it should come to come to pretty much zero. Um, so you can see clearly see I've got a concern here that is pointing to a concern with cylinder three and cylinder four. Um, so I didn't want to just check it at idle. So uh, my next capture is just bring the engine RPM up to fifteen hundred RPM. You can now see uh, cylinder four correction has become within spec, um, but cylinder three has stayed at five. Uh, but now, oh, but now cylinder one and two have gone out of spec with uh, uh, both at minus three. So what does this tell us? Uh, not not a lot really. It's, it's telling us we've got a concern with cylinder, possibly a concern with cylinder three, but it's not telling us whether it's fuel, mechanical, um, or electrical. Um, so to move forward with diagnostics on this vehicle, it would then become in, intrusive. You would have to do. You can start off with in, with injector leak off, see if you've got a warning injector. Uh, but that's obviously not telling you whether it's still telling you whether it's a mechanical fault or, or not. So you would uh, the next test will be swapping injectors within, within cylinders to see whether the fuel high fuel correction that we've got in cylinder three moves to another cylinder or, or stays with the injector. Um, and doing a manual compression test when you've got the injectors out. So it's it's all very intrusive and, and takes a lot of time. You could have issues with getting injectors out uh, and, and so forth. And you, you so you're committing the customer to spending money and extra time um, when you still don't actually know what's wrong with the vehicle. Um, so I just want to show how PeopleScope can actually pinpoint and, and narrow down this con a concern with a particular cylinder um, and identify what's, what's going on. So my first test was just, just nice, quick and simple, just put an amp man injector for, injector one for cylinder identification and put in, uh, the WPS at the exhaust just to see what pulses I'm getting from the exhaust. Um, so this is injector one. It was just the easiest one to get to. It doesn't matter which one you connect to as long as you know the firing order. Um, so this is my power stroke for injector one and then this is my exhaust stroke for injector one. Um, and you can see I'm getting a nice good pulse on exhaust um, on injector one, cylinder one. 180 mark is when cylinder three is my next firing order would fire. So this is my power stroke for cylinder three and this is my exhaust stroke for cylinder three. And you can see I've definitely got a low, low pressure um, from the exhaust on cylinder three. Uh, just to explain this further, uh, my next slide is I've just overlaid a, a known good. And you can see, um, what we're, what we're looking for is all these peaks to be the same because uh, the output from each cylinder should be the same. Um, so we, clearly with, with the overlay you can see I've definitely got a concern with cylinder three. So my next test was what if I didn't have a WPS or pulse sensor that I could put the exhaust? Is there another way I can identify which cylinder is not uh, contributing to the engine speed? Um, so what I've added now is, is crankshaft um, sensor signal and then very easily with using the math channel which is just this icon here um, it, it, with Pico 7 it's so much easier you just got, scroll down to the bottom you've got automotive um, and then you've got crank and you click on there and you just put, fill in um, the empty spaces of what channel you're, you're using and how many teeth 
So for this vehicle, I've got 58 teeth um, and I've added two for the reference, so giving me 60. Um, and then it calculates the RPM for you. Um, so you can so you can see here as injector one fires, this is my, my lowest RPM. Uh, so it's about 750, just above 750 RPM. And then as injector one fires, my engine speed increases to 931. Um, and then it drops back down and then we expect injector three to contribute to the RPM uh, and when it fires, but we see virtually no increase in RPM. Um, and then injector four fires, we see a nice decent increase in RPM in injector two and so on. We can actually draw a line from, from the peak here Right, right the way through and we can see a nice steady increase in engine RPM confirming that my, um, I've got nice even output from, from these three cylinders and my low output is, is only from cylinder one, uh, sorry so from cylinder three. Um, so the next thing I did was add a, add a uh, camshaft sensor signal um, just so I can see exactly where TDC on cylinder one is because um, I can see when the injector fires, which uh, is that TDC on cylinder one. And you can see it's in right in the middle of, of my medium sized camshaft lobe uh, or camshaft signal. Um, so, what else can I get from this capture now? I've got, now I've got both the cam and crank. I can zoom in on here, on here, on this section. Um, and if I have a known good or if there's a known good on the um, peak away from library, I can actually confirm that my camshaft timing is actually correct, um, which is always a, a, a nice, nice feature um, without having to put all the timing tools in and so on. Um, so my next test, test would to do is to see whether now we've confirmed it's only cylinder three is, is my concern. Um, is it compression or is it fuel or is it electrical? Um, so using my camshaft sensor I've disconnected the all four injectors so I no longer have a, a, a reference from the um, in, injector pulse um, but I know cylinder, TDC for cylinder one is right in the middle of this camshaft sensor signal so I've marked uh, I then put the amp clamp mount the, the battery cable and uh, crank the engine and see what's, what draw this we've got from the starter if the compressions are all the same, um, we expect to have the same amount of um, amp draw um, for each compression event. So I've marked cylinder one here, and you can see uh, we've got nice even pull uh, uh, from the, from the starter. If I had a compression concern with cylinder three, we would see uh, a low peak here, uh, but clearly we haven't. Uh, so this confirms that my compressions are good. I've also kept on up the, the exhaust pulse just for, for a reference because you can see when we had it running, we, could, we definitely had a low output from cylinder three. Um, and now you can see um, just on, on the cranking compression with no fuel getting, it, getting in, um, we, we do have a nice even exhaust pulse. So it's showing that it, it was the, a lack of injection, injection uh, compression of our power event from cylinder three that was affecting our exhaust pulse. Um, next thing I wanted is just to, to cover is what if you didn't have an amp clamp, um, could you still do relative compression? Um, so the answer is yes. So what I've connected up the, on my red channel here is just an AC coupled to the battery, um, just so I can get, a, and just to, so you can compare. So even if I didn't have an amp clamp, I could see what um, the output from the starter. I could do a relative compression, and you can see um, my. AC output from across the battery is pretty much mimicking what I've got from the amp clamp. So um, even if I only had a two-channel scope, um, I could and I could I could and no amp clamp, I could still do a relative compression and and identify which cylinder is low on compression. Um, hope that makes sense. So and now I've ruled out a mechanical concern. I've moved on to to see what my injectors were doing. Um, so I wanted to move on with doing injector leak off and see what my uh, leak off on the injectors were doing. This is a very quick and easy test. Um, there is, it is a guided test on Pico, but I've done it slightly differently um, because I know I have a farm dimity bar return pressure. So um, I just want to use that and see what 
uh, pulses I have uh, connected. The, so I've, all I've done is connected the WPS in line with a vacuum T piece, and I've used a clear piece of hose um, just to see whether I've got any air in the fuel. Um, and I started the engine and, and just had it on range two you know, for 500 millibar and just see what I got. So this is my result. You can see as injector one fires, I've, I get an increased pulse from uh, leak off of, as in just after injector one fires. Injector three fires, I get pretty much no leak off. Um, and then four and two. What we're looking for is these, this is just a relative leak off. It does, it's not actually recording how much fuel each injector is, is leaking off. Um, but so, but we want basically we're, we're just looking to see we could compare each injector for um, comparing all, all four injectors. So obviously, if we had a high leak off, one of these will be will go higher than the than the other three. Um, ideally, we want them all to match. Um, so this has identified that I've definitely got a concern with uh, low leak off from from injector three. Uh, my blue channel here is. Um, my fuel pressure voltage uh, at, at the rail. Um, it looks nice and even, nice and stable. But um, if we if we examine this closer, we we, we can get uh, a lot more detail. Uh, so first, I want to discuss what the my injection pump on this vehicle. It's a three chamber pump, um, and um, it, it's timed. At, they're, they're separated 120 degrees. Um, they're spaced out 120 degrees and it runs at two thirds the speed of the crankshaft. So for every revolution of the crankshaft, two of these chambers will um, put pressure into the rail and this can be seen on the scope. So as you can see when we zoomed in, we can see a nice increase in pressure as, as each, just before each injecting event happens. Um, this could, with a three pump chamber, four injectors, um, so it's never the same pumping chamber to, to each cylinder, so um, providing we can actually see all three pumping chambers are working correctly, um, so we've confirmed that our, our fuel pump is is, is working correctly. Um, it also tells us that our timing for the fuel pump is also correct, because we can see the pressure increasing just before each injector injector event. What we can also also see as each injector fires is the oscillation in the fuel pressure and then the, uh, the amount that the fuel pressure drops and we can see this is equal on on these three cylinders what we don't see is no oscillation when cylinder three fires and no drop in fuel pressure um, obviously we've, if we had high leak off on, on on a particular injector we'd expect the fuel pressure to drop lower um, and then the injection pump would have to work harder to get to get this, the, the pressure back up so this is uh, again identified that we've got a, definitely got a concern with cylinder three. There's no injection pulse on injector three. Um, so I just want to run through and then the, my, how I done my electrical test. It, it, I just connected a node light um, in place of the injector, started the engine, and watched the engine and um, watched the node light flash. This is actually how I rebuke. I didn't have a vehicle obviously with a with a warning injector with a, that would give me a high leak off. So this is just how I, I produced this presentation for you today. Um, I just simulated a, a non-working injector. Um, so what what we included? For, so we have absolutely no conclusion after thirty minutes with, with uh, of diagnostics with just the scan tool alone. It tells us nothing. Uh, it only just points us in 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 a particular direction. I would then have to go intrusive to um, find out exactly what's wrong. But after 30, 30 minutes with the scope, I've confirmed the issue is only related to cylinder three. The compressions are equal on all cylinders. My camshaft timing is correct. My pump injection pump timing is correct. The injection pump pumping chambers are all equal and working. The fuel fuel return pressure is correct. My injector leak off is is low on on, cylinder, on injector three. There's no air in the fuel system. There's no drop in the fuel pressure when cylinder three is, is triggered. Um, and then my injector three wiring and ECU is, is operating okay. Um, so that's the end of the presentation. I hope you, you find this useful and get something out of it. Thank you.